Red Team, a name used by multiple Spartan teams throughout the years, but one most synonymous with the team of Spartans from Halo Wars. Led by Jerome 092 and comprised of Douglas 042 and Alice 130, these three Spartans were first known to fans when they appeared on the streets of Arcadia, but naturally have a past that stretches back to the Spartan 2 program. Jerome Cable, Spartan 092, was born on May 8, 2511, on the inner colony of Minister in one of the underdeveloped regions. Douglas Rutland, Spartan 042, was born on April 21, 2511, on the remote world of Asphodel. Alice Tereske, Spartan 130, was born on the sparsely populated colony of Passage on July 17, 2511. Like other Spartan 2s, all three were kidnapped in September of 2517 at the age of 6. Left in their places were Flash clones, rapidly grown clones that were perfect copies of the originals, created to avoid raising suspicion about the Spartan 2 program. Unfortunately, the accelerated growth and issues related to cloning a full human left the clones extremely vulnerable to various genetic disorders. While some would survive into their early to mid-teen years, most would die within weeks or months of replacing their Spartan 2 candidate. After the abductions, all three, along with the other 72 candidates, would spend the next eight years training under Senior Chief Petty Officer Franklin Mendez and learning from the AI Deja. In that time, Jerome was one of four candidates identified by Mendez and program leader Dr. Catherine Halsey as a potential leader for the Spartans, alongside Kurt 051, Fred 104, and John 117. Though John would ultimately become the leader of the Spartans, Jerome's leadership skills would not go unnoticed. Jerome, Douglas, and Alice would fight in multiple theaters during the Covenant War, Jerome often leading them and other Spartans as they had of Red Team. In early 2531, Red Team was deployed to Arcadia for reasons currently unknown. Whatever the reason, when the Covenant showed up on February 9th, they were ready to help in the fight. When Covenant forces invaded the capital city of Perth, Red Team worked with forces from the UNSC Spirit of Fire, which had chased the Covenant from Harvest, in evacuating civilians from the city. After the city was evacuated, Red Team was attached to the Spirit of Fire as they continued to fight against the Covenant. While investigating what the Covenant had been looking for on Arcadia, Dr. Ellen Anders was kidnapped by a massive Sunkhili, the Arbiter known as Ripamorami. Red Team unfortunately arrived too late to prevent this, and they along with Sergeant Forge returned to the Spirit of Fire. When discussing what to do about Anders' kidnapping, Jerome's first suggestion was destroying the ship she was on, much to the horror of Sergeant Forge. Luckily, Captain Cutter decided to pursue the Covenant ship. During the slipspace transit, Forge confronted Jerome about his suggestion. The ensuing altercation resulted in a broken chair, a seal malfunction on a bulkhead, and a stern interruption from Serena. Afterwards, the two always ate together in the mess hall. The Spirit of Fire arrived over an unknown world in an unknown system on February 23rd and immediately re-engaged Covenant forces with Red Team's help. Unfortunately, they also found themselves confronted by a new enemy, an alien parasite known as the Flood. With the help of Red Team, Spirit forces were able to fight off the Flood, including a proto-Gravemind. However, they soon found themselves stranded on the surface. The Spirit, meanwhile, was being pulled into the planet by an unknown force. With aid from Sergeant Forge, Red Team and other Spirit forces were rescued and returned to the ship just as it was pulled into the planet. The Spirit soon discovered that the planet they had found was what the Forerunners called a Shield World and contained a massive fleet that could wipe out humanity. After aiding in the rescue of Dr. Anders, Red Team worked with Spirit forces to destroy the Shield World and the fleet of ships it contained. Using the ship's Shaw Fujikawa slipspace drive, they'd caused the Shield World's artificial sun to go supernova, destroying it, the Shield World, and everything within. Red Team helped escort the slipspace drive to the Apex site. When the site came under attack by the Arbiter and his forces, Red Team eliminated the Sanghili forces while Sergeant Forge engaged and killed the Arbiter. Unfortunately, the slipspace drive was damaged during Forge's fight, meaning someone would have to manually align the core when the drive was ready to blow. Jerome initially volunteered, but Forge decided that he would be the one to do it, as Spartans would prove more valuable in the ongoing war effort. Red Team then aided Spirit Forces as they prepared to evacuate the Shield World and, after escaping, entered cryosleep with the rest of the crew. With no slipspace drive, the Spirit would be forced to travel back to UNSC space without faster-than-light capabilities. Red Team would be labeled MIA following this mission, as was the protocol for Spartan II's during the Covenant War. In January of 2537, Jerome 092 was awoken when a small flood infection broke out on the Spirit. With the aid of Dr. Ellen Anders and Serena, the outbreak was eliminated, after which Jerome returned to cryo. 
Now, in early 2559, the Spirit of Fire has found itself over a mysterious Forerunner installation known as the Ark. Red Team has been awoken along with the rest of the crew, and when sent into to explore an abandoned UNSC outpost, were ambushed by a massive brute known as Atriox and his forces known as the Banished. Douglas 042 has had his armor broken, and Red Team was forced to run. Who is Atriox? Who are these Banished? And why are they on the Ark? Only time holds the answers to these questions and more. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and sharing it around. You are the reason I get to keep doing this, so thank you, profusely thank you. If you want to dive deeper into Halo's lore, head over to the Halo Archive. It's a lore-based community that welcomes everyone from experts to rookies. No matter what your working knowledge, you'll be sure to find a friend and a good time.